Welcome back, guys. Sorry for the long layoff. I would like to say I had an excuse other than some small travel days, but I was honestly just being lazy. Uh, I apologize for not having a webcam at the moment. We're, we were having some audio syncing issues, so I decided to just do this video without the webcam until I get my other camera set up. But I'm glad to be here at last, and I'm glad to be back. I get a fair amount of questions asking me what I do as a cloud security engineer. Um, and I've used the AWS CDK to automate compliance in the cloud at my job now and my previous job as well. Now I understand that some cybersecurity engineering jobs do not require a lot of coding uh, or software engineering knowledge, but knowing something like this is really good on a resume. And basically what I'm talking about is, I'm talking about the AWS CDK that you see on your screen right now. Um, it's a really powerful resource if you are trying to automate compliance in the cloud. It's a really powerful resource if you're trying to, or if you're trying to provision infrastructure as code, which essentially is just taking code or or uh, files, um, templates of sorts, and provisioning that into the AWS cloud. You can do Azure as well, but I'm most familiar with AWS, and that actually compiles as CloudFormation. Um, so I'll also be adding this great resource that I'm gonna take you guys through today um, in the description below. It's an informative white paper that I actually learned the CDK from almost a year and a half ago now, which is crazy. Um, but yeah, it's really great to be back and welcome to automating your compliance in the cloud as a security engineer. Hope you guys enjoy. So to summarize the CDK at a high level, it's essentially just a software development library that lets you create infrastructure as code. Now, like we said before, infrastructure as code is just the process of provisioning and managing your cloud resources by writing a template, or in this case, a programming um, file or programming language. But in terms of the AWS CDK, this comes in the form of cloud formation. So when we go through all this stuff within the CDK workshop that you see on your screen in front of you, all of this is going to be creating code that then creates a CloudFormation stack or a template that can be deployed. So that's another way you can use this, but we'll go into that more um, in detail in another episode. The CDK's role is essentially just to create a way in which engineers can provision in infrastructure and action on that infrastructure using various programming languages. Like we see here, we have TypeScript, we have Python, we have .NET and Java. I don't know who's using .NET with this, but if you are, I'm going to call the police on you. As you see here, there's just tons of ways in which you can provision infrastructure in AWS. They do a really great job on having software development libraries. They do a really great job on having open source libraries and they do a really great job at keeping this CDK up and running. You're able to put in pull requests on GitHub. There's, there's various different ways that you can reach out. Now that you see all of the programming languages that you can use, and I know some people are gonna ask me, why am I using TypeScript? It's native to the cloud, essentially is native to the AWS cloud. And it's how I learned uh, the CDK. The person that taught me the CDK wrote in TypeScript. So essentially I just learned it in TypeScript. Feel free to use it in TypeScript, Python. Please don't use it in .NET and Java. I've heard Java is actually really, really good. Um, although I kind of thought it sucked in the beginning, but that's a whole nother story. Now, before we hop into this workshop or this tutorial, I really want to emphasize what the point of this video series is going to be. And the point is really, I get a, a ton of questions and a ton of, just a ton of questions on what I do on a daily basis. And I think a lot of the engineering, the cybersecurity engineering that is, and also if you guys hear a young child screaming in the background, I promise we're not running a murder farm here. I think my uh, neighbors are just playing Frisbee with their kids. So that's besides the point. But I hear a lot of people ask me, questions and say things like, hey, cybersecurity engineering is not really engineering, or I hear people say cybersecurity engineering is essentially just setting up SIEM tools or SIM tools um, or actioning on vulnerabilities. But I've actually had a really different experience with cybersecurity engineering, and I'm not really sure if it's just because of the startup culture that I came from or, or what, but I've actually taken that startup mentality and moved on to my new job doing government contracting and implemented these same things. Now, in an agile framework or that DevSecOps motion that a lot of people are going to have to abide by when they're in cybersecurity engineering, 
the time has come where cybersecurity engineers really have to learn how to be proficient in writing code and they almost have to be just software engineers. Now a lot of holes in my game got exposed when I had to do actual software engineering. So I would say the past three or four months or so, I really put a lot of work into just being a really good software engineer and a really good engineer in general. So just want to preface it with that. Let's hop right into the prerequisites that you're going to need for the AWS CDK. Now, the first one is going to be the AWS CLI, and I'm just going to briefly touch on these. I'm not going to actually go in and click through them, um, but essentially, if you click in, you'll see what you need to do to set up each of these. But the AWS CLI is essentially just a terminal program that I'm going to show you here. So when you download the CLI, you'll be able to run something called an AWS configure. Now, all that's going to do is it's going to ask for an access key, a secret access key, um, a default region, and the output format you want it in. And all this is doing is this is hooking your AWS CLI up to a specific account. And that's going to help us in the future because we're going to have to deploy this CDK or this infrastructure as code through one specific user account. So I made one here. It's called test. I gave myself administrative privileges just for this proof of concept. Obviously, if you're in an enterprise, you're just going to need certain privileges for cloud formation. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to make your user, you're going to come into, oh, also, you're going to want to make a programmatic user for the CDK. It needs to be a programmatic user, but you'll see that in the documentation over here if you run through it. And I'll put this in the description below just for reference. And of course, if you have any questions, reach out to me on Discord, reach out to me on Twitter, all those things will be in the, the uh, description as well. So I made my programmatic user, and all you're gonna do to authenticate to it is you're gonna take your access key and your secret access key. Obviously, I can't show you that, I'm already authenticated. But if you run by this thing here, you'll be able to see all that. And this is shown to you in the AWS account and user, right? So you're gonna need the AWS CLI, I use CLI v2. You're gonna need an um, AWS account and a user with programmatic access as well as access keys and a secret access key. You're also gonna to need to have Node installed. Now I'm gonna run this at kind of a low level just in case people don't know what Node is. But I already have Node installed here even though it's a Windows machine. And you're gonna need at least 12.18.4 as the version number for your Node. That's the basis that you need. Now, for us, we're just gonna hop right into the AWS CDK toolkit. But feel free to check out the IDE you can use, check out Python if you want. I usually just hop straight into the toolkit. So I've already done this on my own um, machine here, as you can see. But if I was new to the AWS CDK, I would just install this. And all this is doing is installing a global package called the AWS CDK through NPM, right? And you can verify your download by just doing a simple CDK hyphen hyphen version. And then you would come through here. But here we want to switch over to TypeScript. Now again, you can use Python if you want. I fully implore you to use Python if you want. I think TypeScript is much easier for the infrastructure side, although I still do write my lambdas in both JavaScript and uh, JavaScript, TypeScript, and uh, Python. So if we come to the TypeScript workshop here, we see that we have to run a command. But I really implore you to push past this page and just hop right into this. So essentially all this is going to do if I was to run these commands, which I already have here, all this is going to do is make a directory called CDK workshop, and it's going to change your directory into that directory that you just made. Then you're going to initialize a sample app. And here's the important part if you want to switch to a language other than TypeScript. I've had a lot of people ask me questions about this because they get errors when they're constantly just copying and pasting this. But if you copy and paste this, all it's going to do is initialize a sample app of the CDK in the language TypeScript. So if you want to use Python, I think it's pretty self-explanatory, but you kind of just, you put Python there instead, you know? So, if I copy and paste this, I would put it right here, right? I can't do it, but this would be the output that you would see here. So a quick overview of what you're looking at right here in the actual console, and let me zoom in. To my actual IDE. Can I zoom in? Okay. So when you come into the actual CDK that you're looking at here, you're going to be looking at something like this. 
Now you're going to see bin, you're going to see CDK out, you're going to see lib, you're going to see all these things here. Obviously, if you've used node before, you know what NPM is, you know what node modules are. But in the actual CDK, the bin is where you're going to be declaring what's called your stacks. Now, a stack is essentially just a cloud formation stack that holds infrastructure or code. So when you come into the bin file or the bin folder, you're going to see your main file right here. And this is where you declare all your stacks. Now, if you go to the lib folder, this is where you action on those stacks and create the infrastructure. Now, this is really cool because if you look at the code and you don't have to know node to know this, I'm just going to explain it very quickly. But if you used AWS before, you're going to know what an SQS queue is. You're going to know what an SNS topic is, and you're going to know what subscribing an SNS topic to a SQS queue is. And it's really cool because we've actually done that in the code here. As you can see, we have const queue, meaning variable queue equals new SQS queue called test CDK queue. And then it adds a different parameter here. Likewise, you have const topic, meaning new topic. And that's named the test CDK topic. Then at the bottom, you're taking the topic here, as you can see there, you're adding a subscription, you're adding a new subscription, and you're adding it to that queue up there. So I hope that didn't confuse you. If it did, please ask me questions in the comments or please message me on Discord. I'd be happy to show you my personal repo, um, the work that I do every day with this. But essentially what this is gonna do if we were to deploy this, it's going to deploy an SQS queue, an SNS topic, and then it's going to add that SNS topic. It's going to subscribe, excuse me, that SNS topic to that SQS queue. And it's going to do all of that in the account that we did the AWS configure with. So whatever account you configured or authenticated with the CD or with the uh, CLI, it's going to push that code there. Now, on my own account, I already have that code and I already have that stuff deployed, as you can see here. But just as a test case, let's create a new one just for proof of concept. So if I wanted to create another SNS topic, I would do topic one equals new SNS dot topic. This, that just declares the app. That's a very standard thing. Test CDK topic 222. I'm just trying to identify it very well. And that should create the new topic. So if we want to deploy this, first what we would do is we would do a CDK list in the terminal. And let me move my IDE up so you guys can see it. But this is going to list the stack that we have in the CDK. Now the only way you need to view stacks is that they're just individual parsed out pieces of infrastructure within the CDK. And in the next video, I'll definitely show you guys how to make your own stack. But this one's just to kind of outline. So if I want to deploy that test CDK stack, as you see there, I do a CDK deploy. Oh, there are the kids yelling again. Sorry about that. And it should deploy directly into my account. Now you might be asking yourself, why would I do all this when I can just click the GUI or I can just go into the user interface of the AWS console? And that might be really helpful for you if you're a single developer or you're just doing some side work. But if you're in an enterprise type situation or you're at a professional company, well, that's a bit redundant, but if you're in a professional setting, chances are is you're going to be in charge of a lot more AWS accounts than just one. And having an automated baseline that you can deploy based on different things that you're researching or different solutions that you're making, it's really helpful to have all that code in one place or, or it's really helpful to have that automated so you don't have to go to multiple accounts and click through all of those accounts. This is a really easy way to not only create infrastructure, but to action on that infrastructure as well. So you can see now that our CloudFormation stack was deployed. And if I actually wanted to see the CloudFormation stack, the actual CloudFormation template, for those of you that are um, familiar with that, I would just come here and do a CDK synth. I would specify the stack. And what would pop up would be something similar to this. Now, the reason you might want something like this is a lot of DevOps um, operations operate on, that's again, redundant saying both, but they operate on using YAML files and JSON files to either provision users. They have a different, they have a, a various amount of ways of using these CloudFormation templates. So if you're trying to propose this solution to your team or you're trying to go into an employer 
and propose this solution as something that would make him want to hire you this is definitely something you want to bring up because a lot of teams use ansible and things like that and they run off cloud formation so this can this solution this cdk can actually fit seamlessly into your company stack so if we go into the actual console we should see right there that we just deployed a new sns topic directly to the console by writing that code now that's going to be really advantageous for you to learn if you want to go into cloud security engineering cloud engineering or just software engineering in general right if you go to an employer and you show them the ways in which you can automate um, especially compliance against different frameworks like NIST or AWS CIS or anything like that. If you go in and show them ways in which you can use this solution to automate that stuff, I, I promise you they're going to be very impressed. Now, I hope this introductory video kind of piqued your interest and got you into thinking about doing the CDK workshop yourself. And I'm going to post that CDK workshop that you see here. And it runs you through everything that you need to know. It shows you how to make. Um, basic code shows you how to synthesize cloud formation templates it has a lot of different things that it can show you and and help you and prepare you for our next episode so you can be there and you can be ready to learn a lot more than you did in, in this one so i'll be posting this resource specifically in the description below and as always feel free to reach out to me on discord twitter anything like that if you have any questions really appreciate you guys waiting on another video of mine i really hope this was informative and I can't wait for episode number two to show you guys some really cool stuff that you can do while automating your compliance in the cloud. Thanks all.